Well, hey, diddly diddly. Welcome to the latest episode of the Extremely Groovy Movie Podcast. I am your host, Stephen Brinkerhoff. Now, I'm actually joined today by a very special guest. And uh, this man needs no introduction. So, uh, allow me to introduce him. He is quite the man. He has done it all. He has sailed the sea. He has climbed mountains. He has uh, he has wrestled alligators in the swamps of Louisiana. He has made the Kessel Run in 12 parsecs. He has, I'm trying to think of things, he has thrown the ring into the mountain. He has done it all. And you may be wondering to yourself, who is this man? What is his name? Well, I'll tell you. Except, I won't tell you. He'll tell you. Who are you? Hey, what's up? My name's Rob Peters. How you doing? I'm doing just fine, thank you. That's great. And who are you? Well, uh, who am I? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm a nice, kind of fuller man, I think. I've gained okay. a couple of pounds the past couple of years. Uh, you know, I'm about to turn 22. That's something that's pretty exciting. It's just like that Taylor Swift song. You know... Yeah, except I, I'm terrible with Taylor Swift. I don't. You don't know Taylor Swift. I know Taylor Swift. You don't know I mean, Swift. I, I know Taylor Swift. I just. You've met her? No. Oh. Actually, you know, I think she always looks like a girl we went to high school with. Who? You know, I, I'm, I'm not gonna say her name, but like, okay. you know, I know. I feel. Doug like, Barda. Yes. Exactly. No. Doug Barda is. Striking young man. Of course he is. He's like six foot three. He's got the eyes of a of a vixen. Yeah. Or was he lost in them? I mean, he's he's just gorgeous. The dark skin just gives it everything. Oh yeah. He's like, he's like always tan. You know. He never tans. I know, right? But we got to move on, Rob. Yeah, I guess we got to move on. We can't talk about Doug Barta forever. I mean, I wish we could. I know. Do you want to just make this the Doug Barta podcast? I mean, we could. But I don't think Welcome to the extremely know. groovy Doug Barta podcast, starring me. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right, so let's move on to our first topic. And the first topic of the day is just to sort of gauge your relationship to the movie community. I'm going to ask you a random question, and I don't, I don't want you to even think about it. I want you to just say the first thing that comes to your head. Okay, so and I'm thinking this on the spot. So, if you could, if you could marry a movie character, who would it be? Aunt Brew from Star Wars. Aunt Brew from Star Wars? Yeah. She's got that blue milk. I know. I mean, she's dead, but, like, that's kind of what makes the, not, 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 like, it's it's kind of like wow man I I missed my chance you know mm-hmm. like she's dead now I never I, I never asked the girl it's it's like it's like when you're in high school and you're like man I should have asked the girl to the dance and you just didn't and now she's like with some guy that I mean you don't even care about and like he's with her and you just feel bad and it's like that's that's me like Aunt Brew from Star Wars it's like it's like you know you, you raise Luke Skywalker like Luke Skywalker is the way he is because of you like you are a, a good parent thing and I don't know well, yeah I mean that, that is something to say I mean he he brought balance he did to the force right after his dad just messed everything I know, up I know right and and like his dad could have like raised him but he had to just be whiny and yeah. stuff and that's kind of sad but right. so you heard it here first Aunt Beru Rob's ultimate crush now Moving on. Let's move on to some movies that we have seen recently. And I'm going to go ahead and, for courtesy's sake, I'm going to throw that to Rob to go first. All right. Well, you want to know the most recent film I've seen. And uh, this kind of explains a lot about me. Uh, but, yeah, the last the last film I saw was, was, was Cars 3. Cars 3? It was, it was a great film. It was great fantastic. Film. A lot of people are saying it's mediocre or like it was a... Like my roommate was telling me the other day, he thought it should have been a direct DVD release. No, no, that film was like a masterpiece. Like, like 
they knew when they made Cars 2 that they shouldn't have ever done that. This is what Cars 2 should have been. I mean, if they weren't just going to, like, not do a trilogy, this is this is how it should have been. That they should have just made Cars 3. Like, it was very timely. Uh, the the act, the animation quality was was Cars, obviously. It wasn't, like, it wasn't, like, stellarly, like, something like Moana or something. But, you know, it was, it was good. Um, you know, it had more emphasis on, like, the actual, on Lightning McQueen, which I liked. The less made the better, just because... There's only so much of, like, there's only so much you can do with that country, like, hillbilly stereotype, and I feel like they just did it all. Okay. So I was like, I mean, it's, it's not like Mater's a bad character. I still think he's funny. It's just like, I liked it. I won't, I won't spoil it, obviously, but it was, it, was a, it was a fantastic film, in my opinion. So Lightning McQueen dies? Um, in my heart, yeah. Yeah, he kind of, like, breaks my heart oh. at the end. Yeah. I don't know why he does what he does, does at the end. Like, if you haven't seen the movie, like, you kind of see it coming, but you also, like, don't expect it. Like, it's, it's obviously foreshadowing all the way up to it, but you're just kind of like, they're not going to really do this to me, are they? And then they go and up and do it, and you're just like, why? Why are you doing this to me? But, I mean, the ending is still a sweet ending. And stuff, so. I, think, I think it just sucks that Paul Newman died. Like... He made that first movie so much. He made it. I think he so. directed it. I mean, he wrote it. He was he, he was Doc Hudson. Parts? He's Doc Hudson. Like that. Oh, I thought he played Mater. You know what? Maybe he did. Paul Newman could just do anything. Yeah. You know. You know, we were talking about Paul Newman in like a class I had the other day. It's like, man, that is that was one gorgeous man. He was, and he was such a good actor. Yeah. I miss Paul, Newman. and he was a great race car driver too. Yeah. Fun fact. All right. Yeah. Well, a movie that I have seen recently is none other than the sequel to the hit film The Kingsman, The Secret Service. I saw The Kingsman, The Golden Circle. And uh, I don't know if you follow Rotten Tomatoes at all. I don't know if you look at the scores. All the time, actually. All the time. That's how I diff terminal. I mean, I don't, like... I try not to like let that mentality of like, okay, I'm gonna go see this movie because it says it's good on Rotten Tomatoes. Like, I try to like give it a chance first before like I decide. Like, maybe if it's like a a DVD or like a Netflix thing, it's like maybe maybe I'll check Rotten Tomatoes first to see if this is even worth my time. But you know, for the most part, I I try not to let it affect me. So okay, well, Kingsman ain't doing too hot. And He's got like a fifty nine percent. Everyone's saying this movie is like bleh. It is no good. It's crapola, crapila, dog doo doo. That's what they say. But it has a 59%. Which isn't terrible. I was going to say, I've seen way worse films that probably have like a negative rating. But once that little green splat starts there, it's, it's weird because it, it could be a 60% and people are like, oh, okay. But if it's a 59%. It's that one, because no, it's, no. it, it's like, you know, you think about, like, the grading scale, you know? Yeah. A 59 is, a, is an F, whereas a 60 is a, is a pass, you know? Yeah. Kind of sucks. It does. Anyway. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I, 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 I like the first Kingsman quite a bit. I don't know if you do as well. Have you even seen it? I haven't seen it. Oh, okay, well, never mind. Well, this movie was not Dog Doo Doo, because... Well, it wasn't great either because, honestly, probably the best word I could use to describe it was mediocre. Kind of forgettable. Fun. But it's not going to stick with me in any way. I mean, it's... I mean, there's a lot of movies that are like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, not every movie can be, like, you know, the greatest film of all time. I mean, you're going to have films that are just, like, kind of mediocre. But that doesn't mean you don't you can't, like, enjoy the ride or anything, you know? Yeah. You know, I've seen I've seen bad films, mm-hmm. but I enjoy like like one of my favorite bad films of all time is always a movie Volcano with Tommy Lee Jones. Oh yeah, that's one of my favorite films, and it's terrible, but I just enjoy the ride. Does he know? fight a volcano? Kind of. Well, yeah, like he gets to, like the entire city of Los Angeles to like fight a volcano. It's it's like a boxing match. I wish. He's like Tommy Lee Jones. Is like, hey, I can't really do this. He voice. blows up a building. Oh yeah. Spoiler alert. 
Well, I mean, you don't know, like, what happened. Like, there's a part in the film where he, like, has to blow up a building. Oh. And it's just, like, this is crazy. Like, you'd never do that. You, There's no physical way you can plan the demolition of a building in the amount of time that he has to blow this up. But he does it. And for some reason, like, you know, like, this whole film is completely impossible. Like, there's no way this would ever happen. Like, a geologist would, like, want to die watching this. And then, like, every other, like, profession that's involved in this, like, it's all wrong. But it's, a, it's like, a fun thrill. That it, it's like, it, it, you just can't, you know, you can't turn away. At least that's how I feel. And I've seen, I've seen some bad films before, and this is not... The worst. All right. Well, you heard it here first, folks. The volcano in theaters now. In theaters in 1997. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's 1997. Right? Oh, it is? Uh, well, I think it's on Laserdisc now. Ooh. Yeah. I've been trying to cut, hunt down a copy of it on Laserdisc for a long time. Okay. Because it does exist on Laserdisc. All right. Well, I know there's a Blu ray one, too, but who cares about Blu ray? Yeah. <laughs> well, moving on. We're going to move on to some movies. That are coming out this week and the next week. And a very special film is coming out this week. It is none other than Blade Runner 2049. Tell me, Rob. Do you like Blade Runner? I've uh, read the concept of it. I've been meaning to see the films. Um, I don't understand the... Con- like, is it... So, the new one is, like, 2049. So, it's, like takes place in 2049 or is it just like I believe so okay because sometimes I can get confusing like I don't know if like that's the 2049th sequel they've made or if that's just the year you know, that I takes place I was thinking that too right I was like oh man I missed a lot of movies right right like you ever tried to watch the Naked Gun trilogy and you can only find three movies exactly like what what the heck I mean what happened between four and 32 and a half right I mean come on People need to name their films a lot better than this. You know, I had the exact same thought with the uh, with the Universal Studios ride, Shrek 4D. Yeah. I remember that I was, uh, uh, this is actually true, I think, how old was I? Probably like 10 years old. I'm like flipping through like Nick Magazine or whatever, and I get to this ad for Shrek 4D. Now at the time, it was only Shrek 1 and Shrek 2. So I was like, what the heck? What did I miss? Yeah, they skipped the whole Shrek. We're Shrek three, right? Well, granted, uh, later on we would we would wish that we missed Shrek three. There's a Shrek four now, isn't there? I think so. It's like Shrek. I mean, they didn't call it Shrek four. Like Shrek they, four. Like, like you ever notice, like once, like you get to sequels and they get past three, they just stop numbering them because they're just like embarrassed that they made so many. Just like Halloween. Yeah. Like, they're just like, okay, we're going to call this Halloween 1, Halloween 2, Halloween 3, Halloween 4, but we're going to add a bunch of, like, you know, subtitles on it, like Revenge of Michael Myers. We're just, I don't know. That bothers me sometimes. I'm bothered by that. You're bothered by it? There's a SpongeBob 4D. Oh, yeah. You know? And there's not even a 1, 2, or 3. There's, like, yeah, there's, like, the SpongeBob movie, and then there's the SpongeBob movie Sponge Out of Water, which isn't, like, even a direct sequel to it. Mm-hmm. I mean, which... Also, in my personal opinion, it was a decent film. A lot of people thought it was bad, but oh. I thought it. I mean, for what it was, I, I didn't think it was bad. But what was I going to do? I mean, I. You had to see SpongeBob. You had to. You had to. You can't just you can't just like exist and say you know there's a SpongeBob film out and I'm just I'm too old. I'm just not going to see. It's like the people who say, oh, I'm too old. I can't I can't go see like. Cars 3. Yeah, like Cars 3 or like a Ninja Turtles movie or something. Mm. Like, granted, they're not the Ninja Turtles that we want, you know, but mm. they're close. They're like aliens instead of like turtles or something. Okay. I don't know. Well, we're talking about Blade Runner. Ta- we should talk about Blade Runner. We should talk about Blade Runner. Uh, well, I have seen the first Blade Runner. Mm-hmm. I believe I saw that for the first time in my introduction to movie class in my freshman year of college. I liked it quite a bit. A lot of people say it's like the greatest sci-fi movie of all time. That's and wow. That's a high. That's a tall order. I can say I've seen a lot of sci-fi films, and I would not. I mean, I would. I would say you know, like from the con. Like I said, I haven't seen the film, but like you know, you read the plot, you kind of see trailers. It's like 
I mean, I assume it's like a great film, but I don't know if it does it rank like next to some of the greatest sci-fi films of all time. I'd say so. I mean, it's um, it does something that a lot of movies fail at, which is like creating a world. That's true. Like it, the 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 aesthetics of the movie, and the way that it kind of just like uses its cinematography to kind of like suck you in. It kind of creates. It's like Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Like Star Wars has just this expansive world that it's just like you could talk about. I don't know. You could talk about a tree in the background. Dude, I could talk about Star Wars for like hours. You could I could just sit here and just straight up talk about Star Wars. You could talk about that little blue elephant that was in Jabba's palace. Right. His name is Max Rebo. This is a really? guy that shows up for like one second. I know his name. <laughs> Max Rebo. I think every character in Star Wars has a name. Yeah, there's like AG88. Yeah. Like every, every every stormtrooper, every clone trooper, every droid, I'm pretty sure, has a name of some kind. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember, like, growing up playing Star Wars games and stuff, and being like, I've never heard of this person's name be mentioned at all, and yet they're in this game or they're in this book about Star Wars. I don't know who the heck they are, but they have a name. Yeah. You know? At least, at least they were, like, they were so cautious. They didn't just name them, like... Droid number five or something, mm-hmm. like that would that would kind of suck. Be like, yeah, I was Droid number five in Star Wars. Be like, okay, who cares? But no, you could say like I'm Palkian Falco or something, and people would be like, oh, dude, you were in the Star Wars film. When in reality, you just play like a minor, very minor background role. Really? Yeah. All right. Well, enough about Blade Runner. Yeah, I got off topic. No, 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 no. I got off topic. <laughs> but. For the second time, we're going to skip over one movie that's coming out next week. That is The Foreigner. It's a movie where Jackie Chan beats up a bunch of people. And I think there's, like, explosions. I don't know. Like every Jackie Chan film ever made. Exactly. But we'll talk about one movie very briefly, uh, mostly because I think this looks terrible. It's called Happy Death Day. And the title alone makes me mad. Like... What? what you don't even know the day of your death. Like, how do you celebrate that? Like, who comes up with that? Well, you know, I mean, I guess once you're dead. I guess. This is like, but could you imagine, like, like, you know, we always, like, remember people's birthdays, you know? But, like, we never remember the day people passed away unless they were, like, really close to us or something. And we just, like, remember that day as, like, being an awful day or something. Mm. Like, for the most, like, like, you don't. We celebrate, like, you know, George Washington's birthday or something, but we don't celebrate the day that George Washington croaked, you know? Exactly. Like, why don't we Why don't we just say, hey, today's the day George Washington died. Let's all get off school. You know, I don't know. I mean, yeah, that would be, that'd be a great way to have less school. Yeah, I'm always an advocate for, you know, less school. But actually, I'm kidding. I love school. But you love school? I hate going to school. I like school. I just hate going to school. Okay. And I hate homework. Okay. I like sitting in class and being told what to think. Okay. Yeah. All right. So anyway, Happy Death Day comes out next week. Uh, it looks like Groundhog Day, but bad. That's what I th- like a modern day horror film of Groundhog Day. Which I think didn't that already something like that already come out this oh, year? I'm sure it has. Cause horror films are just so hard to do right. Mm-hmm. I mean, like. Everybody's talking about it, right? Mm-hmm. Talking and about what? It. What? Pennywise. Oh. Yeah. Oh, it. Yeah, it. Okay. It. I thought you were using a pronoun. No, I, I, I wish I could use a pronoun, but, um, you know, everybody's talking about that movie as, like, one of, like, the greater horror films of, like, right now. I'm like, there's been, I've seen so many horror films just try, like, Happy Death Day is like just another one of those that's like overhyped and like they the I feel like they have more of a budget to spend on like advertising this film than they actually do on making a good film. You know like like do you remember that that unfriended film that like was getting all this hype and then it and everybody knew it was terrible mm-hmm. because it like all took place like over Skype call or something. I'm like that's where all your budget went. Your budget went into hyping this film and not into actually making anything via cinematography or via mm-hmm. like 
nobody knows who any of the actors are. Like, at least throw me a bone and sign on Jamie Lee Curtis. Like, come on. I mean, if you're gonna make a horror film that's gonna have that little effort into it, at least, at least give me somebody that I know, you know? Who would she play? Would she, she like play? a mom or something? Who would she be like, the Facebook icon? I mean, she could, you know, she could be like that annoying aunt on Facebook that constantly, like, posts, like, really racist things and you can't say anything about it because your mom will text you and say, hey, lay off Aunt Janet, <laughs> you know? And, 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 and it's like, you know, that's who she could play. I mean, I don't think she'd want to, but mm. she, could, she could probably do it. Oh, she could be, uh, she could be that little uh, paper clip. From she could be Clippy? Clippy, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, you know what? I, you, you know what? Why wasn't Clippy in that film? He should have been a killer all along. Right, yeah. Like, you know, the killer could, should have been, like, a virus. Like, right before you die, you hear that little thing where he taps on the screen. It's like, ding, ding. No, like, you, you think you're about to die. Like, you start to, like, like the computer virus actually, like, starts to infect you. But then all of a sudden, like, it's just a computer virus and you're fine. And once your computer crashes, you're like, oh, my kidneys stopped bleeding. Oh, my God. Mm. You know, it's just something... Something like that. I mean, that's so. So when I think of like Happy Death Day, I feel like if they're gonna like make a film that's gonna take itself way too seriously like that, you need to at least throw me a bone and make me want to take it seriously. Like if you're not gonna take it seriously, then come on, just we get it. You know, just kind of be like that tongue in cheek comedy, and where it's like it's not trying to be a comedy, but it is because it's so bad. Mm. You know what I mean? So. I wish more movies were like that. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, either see it or don't see it next week. Uh, as far as the public opinion goes, maybe don't see it. Who knows? It could be great. It could be the next best picture. You never know. But we have to move on to some recent movie news of recent. Uh, first topic of the day. Uh, hot off of his death, Hugh Hefner's getting his own movie. Yeah, how about that? How long were they waiting on this? You know, probably once they probably once he croaked, they're like, guys, but like, get your people, pins. People have been like assuming Hugh Hefner is gonna die for like twenty years, and mm-hmm. he's now all of a sudden he did, and it took like everybody and their mom by shock. You know, like how long were they sitting on this, and they were just like, yeah, by the way, we're gonna make this film, and you should probably tell everybody who's gonna star in it, right? Who's going to start it? Yeah, well, none other it. than the greatest Joker of them all. Sarcasm. That's heavy Jared sarcasm. Leto. J- 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 Jared Leto. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't. Does he? Is he not a dead ringer for Hugh Hefner? I don't understand why he should play Hugh. Like, what? What has he done to? Wa- like, we if we want to do Hugh Hefner justice. Like, regardless of, like, your opinions on him, like, some, I've seen some people say, like, Hugh Hefner was this great guy. I've seen some people say Hugh Hefner was, like, this bad guy. Still, you should want to do, like, a posthumous film justice and, like, actually try to cast somebody who's going, like, like, don't be, like, that, that guy. I mean, don't be that guy who's, like, yeah, I'm going to get Ashton Kutcher to play Steve Jobs just because I think it's a good idea. Just mm-hmm. because he's a good actor and stuff. It's like, he might be a good actor to some people. Like, I think Ashton Kutcher's a great guy, but, like, I didn't see him playing Steve Jobs. I don't mm-hmm. see why he should have played Steve Jobs. I feel like that role could have gone to somebody who could have probably done him justice. You know, I feel like if you're going to make a film about Hugh Hefner, you have to do it justice. Somebody who, you know, is in a way kind of, well, maybe Jared Leto is... I don't know. I just feel like that's a bad casting choice. Mm. I mean, I'm, I'd am i probably go see it, but I don't know if I'd enjoy it as much as I could. Okay. Well, the film is being directed by the director of such hit films as X-Men The Last Stand and the Hercules movie with The Rock in it that came out like two years ago. Brett Ratner. They made a Hercules movie with The Rock in it? Yeah, of course. He's big. He's muscular. You know, I love The Rock. I watched him when I was a kid, when he was in, in, in the WWE. And I watched a lot of his early films when he was... I saw that atrocious Doom film that he was in. Mm-hmm. I love The Rock. But he needs a better agent. Mm. 
He really needs a better agent. There, he could give me in so many better films. Oh, maybe he should play Hugh Hefner. You know what? Maybe. Like a really ripped, really ripped Hugh Hefner. Like if you're, yeah, like if you're going to do Hugh Hefner justice, like you need, yeah. But seriously, like, like think of all the movies The Rock has been in. Most of them have been really terrible. Like Baywatch. What was the point of that? Like why? Come on, he needs to read these scripts before he signs on to these things. Hmm. Like, I I love him. I love him to death. I think he's a great guy, and he's my favorite wrestler. And he's, but he just needs a better agent. He needs to do better films, because I feel like he doesn't. He just doesn't. He wants to be an actor, but he doesn't know what film is good and what film is bad. All right. Well, you heard it here for, first, folks. Uh, Jared Leto has dropped out of the Hugh Hefner biopic and has been replaced by none other than Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I think uh, John Cena is going to play Marilyn Monroe. You know what? I would pay for that. I would pay good money for that. Right. I mean, you wouldn't be able to see him, but... Anyway, now we're running out of time, so we're going to skip over a couple news stories. Uh, Kate Winslet and... Uh, a bunch of young people are going to be in the new Avatar sequels that you don't want. Um, yeah, nobody asked for those. Exactly. I asked for a better a- Avatar The Last Airbender film. I didn't ask for Avatar sequels. The I first one stood alone on its on its own fine. To quote a meme from 2013, I didn't ask for this. Yeah, that's, that's a very good meme. Yeah. And uh, speaking of things you don't want, there's going to be a Men in Black movie that doesn't have Will Smith or Tommy Lee Jones. Is so, it even Men in Black then? No, nah, it's just a guys in suits. That's what it should be called, guys in suits. I got. I, I just. I was just talking about Tommy Lee Jones and just how much I like him. Like when I saw Volcano, it made me watch Men in Black one, two, and three. I was like, this guy's freaking great. And then he's got Will Smith. I mean, these movies are great. How can you make a film that's Men in Black and not have those two characters? Like I don't know what people are thinking. Maybe they don't want to sign on. Maybe Tommy Lee Jones too old. Maybe Will Smith wants to go back to rapping, or maybe his son's way too high all the time. I don't know. Who knows? But we're going to move on to one topic that I think is in particular interest to my good friend Rob here. Yeah. There is going to be a Sonic the Hedgehog <laughs> movie <laughs> from the the director of Deadpool. He will not direct it, but he will produce it. <laughs> oh my god. How I mean, I love Sonic the Hedgehog. Like, I love the games. I Sonic. I have Sonic One, Sonic Two, Sonic Spinball, Sonic Adventure. I love the Sonic games, right? I don't have Sonic Three because it's expensive. But um, how are you gonna like? What are you gonna do with the Sonic? Like they tried this with like the Super Mario Brothers movie. Like what are you what are you gonna do with this? It's like the nineties are over. Like we can't. What are, what are we doing? The nineties are over. They've been over for like twenty years. Like we can't. We, we. How how are you gonna get people to see this movie? I mean, are you gonna attract people with like how rad and extreme Sonic is, or are you gonna like attract people with, you know, how, you know, great the animation is, or I don't know. I have no idea. Now, what what, what type of Sonic do you think this is going to be? Do you think it's gonna be like a like a Sonic the Hedgehog that's like cartoons, like he has been in the more recent games? Or is it going to be like the really creepy Sonic where he like hangs out with like realistic humans? Oh, it's going to be Sonic 06. 100%. Okay. It's going to be Sonic 06. There's going to be some like real strange furry stuff in there. Okay. It's going to be really creepy, probably. I mean, Sonic 06 just in itself was a bad game, but the idea of Sonic falling in love with a princess, a human princess, not a hedgehog princess, a human princess is creepy. And I feel like that's probably... I, I, I have low standards. I have low expectations. I feel like that's the route they're going to go. And, uh, and who do you think should play the hedgehog himself? Billy West. Billy West? If you don't get Billy West to play Sonic, I'm not going to see it. But what if it's like a live-action Billy West? Like he's butt-naked, but he's painted to look like... Sonic the Hedgehog. Then I might see it. Okay, he's got like big gloves on. Yeah, I might see it. He's like, gotta go fast. I want to see Billy West sped up, like just like I I, I want to see like how he's gonna run down yeah. a field and they're just gonna speed it up. Right. 
And I need I need Billy West to go into a spin ball. Like I need him to curl up into a ball and do a spin dash move. Okay. Like that's what I need. I desperately need to see that. You want to see him like jump into the air? He spins into the ball. He locks on and yeah. he just hits you. Just Who's like gonna play it? tails? Who plays tails? By Justin Long. Can we get Kevin Hart? We could do that too because he's quite short. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm, I'm like thinking short people, and I'm like, dude, Kevin Hart would be a great. I mean, he'd be like he like the perfect like black sidekick, you know? Mm-hmm. He'd be like he. I, I mean, he'd just be like something like. Yeah, what's happening, Sonic? Uh-huh. You know? And Sonic would, would be like, I'm going all extreme, gotta go fast. And Tails would just kind of be there. I mean, I, Danny DeVito has to play Dr. Robot. Okay. And, uh, and, and Vin Diesel as Knuckles. But I think that's a good place to end it there. We've reached our time limit. So I guess just to close things out, you can follow the Campus Citizen at the Campus Citizen. You can follow me at Brinker Dinker. I got a real spooky name for uh, Twitter this year, or this month, Stephen Frankenhoff. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. It's like David Hasselhoff, but was Frankenstein. Exactly. But your name is Brinker. What would your spooky name be? Uh, Probably... I don't know. Rob, Rob Screamers. Rotten. Rotten. Rotten, rotten Peters. Something. Rotten Peters, yeah, something like that. You should go on Twitter and change it right now. I probably should. I still like my idea of, like, taking a pumpkin. I want to put a pumpkin inside my apartment, smash it, and have everybody say, hey, Billy Corgan. Okay. I really want to do that. I'm, I'm really tempted to do that, but I'm worried about the smell, so. Okay. And where can they follow you? They can follow me at rpeters33, that's at r-p-e-e-t-e-r-s, and then two number threes. Um, I'm sometimes funny on Twitter, I talk about a lot about sports, but uh, I do talk about general interest stuff too, um, movies I've seen, movies I am seeing, like whatever I'm watching on Netflix right now or something. I don't watch a lot of Netflix, I like, very rarely do, but when I do, I, I try to talk about it. Like how much I hate Johnny Test, this is the worst cartoon ever. I talk a lot about cartoons, so if you love cartoons, I will talk about cartoons, I promise. Alright. Well, thank you for listening, and thank you, Robert, for coming on in. Appreciate it. And, uh, and, uh, uh, and, and goodbye. Yeah, salutations, senors, and senoritas.